In section 3.3, we're talking about properties of logarithmic functions. And the first type of property we'll talk about here, you see under the objectives, is the product rule for, for logarithms. Then we'll look at the quotient rule and the power rule. All of those will be ways in which we will expand and condense logarithmic functions. And then lastly, we look at the change of base property. This is actually a pretty quick and easy section, but important nonetheless. Uh, first step up, we talk about the product rule. And what the product rule is going to tell us is that anytime we have terms inside of a logarithm of any base, here I have the term m times the term n. And anytime you have terms multiplied, you can separate that logarithm into two separate logarithms and say it's the log base b of m plus the log base b of n. Now, I've just done that with two terms in there, but however many terms that you had in there multiplied, that's how many separate logarithmic terms you would have. So if I had five terms in there being multiplied, I would separate it as five separate logarithmic functions all being added to one another. So that's a key component up here is that the logarithm of a product is the sum of the individual logarithms. Now, to see that in action here, a uh, couple of quick and easy examples. If I have the log base six of seven times 11, okay, well, all I have to do is say, that's the log base six of seven plus the log base six of 11. So the answer here, so, so like if I was trying to think about what this represents, this first one is asking me, since seven times 11 is 77, it's asking me, what power would I need to raise six to in order to get a 77? So when I'm thinking of that in my head, I know six squared is 36, six cubed is 216. So it's some number in between two and three. I don't know what it is. I would depend upon a calculator to tell me that. Well, even once I break it up, I still don't know what it is, but I can see pretty much that, that it's going to be a number between two and three because I'm looking at the first one that says, the log base six of seven, I know that's a number slightly larger than one. The log base six of 11, again, it's a number slightly larger than one because six to the second power is 36. So we would have a number larger than one times a number larger than one, and we can already tell that their product is gonna give me a number larger than two since 77 is more than 36 here. But again, the point of the product rule is just to get you to see that Anytime you have multiplication on the inside, you separate it up with the addition of the separate logarithms. If I had the log of 100x, I can say, well, that's the log of 100 plus the log of x. And unlike last time where it really didn't help me as far as simplification when I broke it into two parts, it did help this time. I know that the log of 100, that's just asking you what power do you have to raise 10 to to get a 100? And of course, it's the second power. So the answer to that first logarithm is two, and this can be simplified to be two plus the log of x, which is certainly better format than the original problem here. Now, quotient rule just says that if you have terms divided inside of a logarithm, then you can separate that division as a subtraction of individual logarithms. So the log base B of M over N is the log base B of M minus the log base B of N. Now, whenever we look at that in practice, you'll see here I have the log base eight of 23 divided by X. Okay, it's a division inside of a logarithm. So I'll separate that into two separate logarithms with a subtraction. And I know that the term in the denominator is always subtracted, so it would be the log base eight of 23 minus the log base eight of x. Now, something I would like you to always keep in mind here is that any factor that's going to be in the denominator, whenever you start separating it into different logarithmic functions, then it's always going to have a minus sign in out in front of it. If it's ever a term in the numerator, it's always gonna have a plus sign out in front of it. As long as you remember that, you'll never have any issue breaking apart whenever we have more complicated fractions than this. Uh, in this next one here, I have the natural log of e to the fifth over 11. Well, that's gonna simplify to be the natural log of e to the fifth minus the natural log of 11. And then I can say in this first one, that is literally asking me, what is, 
what power of e is e to the fifth? Well, it's the fifth power of e. So the answer to that first one is just a five. You can also think about it as the natural log and e are inverse functions. They cancel each other out. You're left with what's remaining. That was the exponent. It's now no longer an exponent once those cancel. And you just have five minus the natural log of 11. Good answer. Now, in terms of answers like this, I would always prefer the exact answer as opposed to a decimal approximation. Uh, five minus the natural log of 11. I know the natural log of 11 uh, is a number between two and three because it's asking me what power of E is 11, but it's gonna be an irrational number. So it's better just to leave it as an exact answer as opposed to getting that irrational. Uh, the, the last rule that we're going to have here is the power rule. And it just says that anytime you have a logarithm with a term raised to a power, that power can and should be brought out in front of the logarithm and just become a constant multiplier of it. So now to see that in practice, if I have something like the log base six of three to the ninth power, okay, well, that rule told me that any power on the inside of a logarithm could come out in front of the log, and that's gonna give me nine times the log base six of three. And again, the log base six of three is an irrational number, so I would just leave it like that. Sometimes students have a little bit of trouble here. Please remember uh, radicals and fractional exponents. If I have uh, the cube root of x to the first, I need to understand that that's just x to the one third power. It's always, always the power divided by the index of the root. So I'm gonna say, well, that's x to the understood one third power. Now that I have it written as a fractional exponent, I know that that exponent can and should be brought out front and say, well, this is better written as one third natural log of x. Finally here, and the reason I did this last one like this is because I see students get these rules confused. They'll say, okay, it's the power rule, it's the product rule, it's the quotient rule, but then they'll want to separate a sum inside of a log. You cannot. If you have a plus or minus signs inside of a log, you have to leave them. You cannot separate those. The only thing I can do to the log of the group x plus four squared, say, well, you've got a power on that term inside the logarithm. That power can be brought out in front and called two log of x plus four, but please understand, there is no product, there is no quotient, there is no power remaining, so you can't do anything beyond that. You just have to leave it as two log of the group x plus four. Addition and subtraction cannot be simplified within a logarithmic function. Now, these are the rules that we talked about, and these are the rules in a specific direction if we're looking to expand a logarithmic expression. Depending on the circumstance and what we're trying to do in the problem, sometimes it will benefit us to expand out the expression, and then other times it'll benefit us to condense, particularly when we're trying to solve equations, the condensing is, is, is uh, preferable. Uh, but let's say we wanted to expand, and I can say, well, we've already seen that. The log base b of m times n, you would expand it as the separate logs of the log base b of m plus the log base b of n. If I have a quotient, I know I'll separate it as a subtraction of individual logs, and the power comes out in front. All of these would be considered the expanded form of the original. So in expanded form, you have no multiplication, no division, and no powers. So now that's what I wanna do on my next problem. I want no multiplication, no division, there's already no division, but I also don't want any powers. So the log base b of x to the fourth times the cube root of y. I understand that that cube root of y is just y to the one third power. Then immediately I can say, well, this is gonna be two separate logarithms. It's gonna be the log base b of x to the fourth plus the log base b of y to the one third. And then I can say, well, now those powers can and should be brought out in front to expand. So I'll have four log base b of x plus one third log base b of y. Pretty cool problem. Uh, now, slightly more difficult. This one brings in division too. Something I would like you to remember is that as soon as I see I have an x in the numerator and I have a 25 and a y cubed in the denominator, that x is going to be inside of a logarithm that has a plus sign in front of it. 
the other two, the 25 and the y cubed, will both be subtracted. Why? Because they're in the denominator. It's as simple as that. So now I try to show that by just saying, well, that square root's the same thing as x to the one half power. So if I first broke this up into two logarithms, and you don't have to show as many steps as I'm doing here. You could get by with far fewer steps. I'm really trying to show my work. I have the log base five of x to the one half minus the log base five of my denominator, the 25y cubed. Now, that log base five of x to the one half minus the denominator, well, that denominator has a product in it. You could go ahead and just say, well, both parts of that product are gonna be subtracted because it's in the overall denominator. That would be easy. I'm trying to show it this way as well, and you can say, well, it's the log base five of 25, or I wrote that as five squared, so now in the next step, I can say, well, the log base five of 25 is just going to simplify to be two. Uh, and then the second term, I have the log base five of y cubed there. Why am I adding? Well, because they're multiplied within that logarithm that's overall being subtracted. So then I can say, all right, this is gonna give me the one half can come out in front and become a coefficient in front of the first log base five of x. This two can come out in front of the log base five of five, and now the log base five of five is just one. You could have went ahead here and just said, well, why not just cancel the log base five of five here and just say your answer's two there as well. You could have. Uh, I waited until the very final answer to simplify that by two, 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 two. I left the log base five of five in. Uh, my last term here, the three comes down as a coefficient and I get three log base five of y. Now, let me go ahead and go to my final answer. And you, I, I really hope you can do this in one step. It shouldn't take multiple steps. As soon as I see this original problem, what should I be thinking? Well, your numerator is to the one half power. Well, then it's gonna be one half log base five of x. Boom, next up. Your denominator has a product. Well, then it's gonna be two separate logarithms and both of those logarithms are gonna be subtracted because those terms are in the denominator. The first one would be minus log base five of 25. Well, the log base five of 25 is two. So that's gonna be subtracting two. Glorious, that's what that came from right there. Your last one, it would be minus y minus because this y cubed is a factor in the denominator, minus the log base five of y cubed, which needs to be written as minus three log base five of y. So I would hope that you could go directly from here to here without showing all of these steps in between. Can you show the steps in between? Of course, but what you're gonna be doing with these problems, this is gonna be one part of a problem that has you been doing many, many, many more steps. So in the future, it's probably best not to try to show out all these steps because it's gonna make your overall problem look ridiculously long. I only showed this here because we're trying to develop the concept, but I would like you to work towards being able to write this and then immediately write the three terms out. Now, if we're going in the reverse direction of condensing, then we have the expanded form. You can say, well, if I have two logarithms being added, I can say that's the log of that common base of the product of those two terms. If I have two logarithms being subtracted, then any terms inside the logarithms that subtracted becomes factors in the denominator. And if I ever have a constant multiple times any logarithm, that constant multiple can be brought up as the power inside the logarithm. This is just the reverse process. Sometimes it's better to write in condensed form. It depends upon the scenario. So let's say I tell you to write as a single logarithm and you're given the log base, uh, the, the log base understood 10 of 25 plus the log of four. So you'd say, well, okay. Then if you bring those together, the two separate logarithms being added becomes the logarithm of their terms being multiplied. So that's the log of 25 times four. And in this case, you can see why it was better to write it in condensed form because the log of 100, that's easy. That's just going to be two. That's asking you what power of 10 is 100? Two. Now, could I have known that the answer was two back here? No way. 
this is asking me what power of 10 is 25 and what power of 10 is four. Uh, I would have never been able to solve that and get an answer of two without condensing first. So this really shows the advantage of condensing. Uh, if I have the log of seven X plus six minus the log of X, you, you can say, well, whenever I condense these down, the logarithm that was positive out in front, its term goes up in the numerator. The logarithm that was negative out in front, its term goes as a factor in the denominator. And I have the log of seven X plus six over X. Uh, my last one here, I have powers on the individual logarithms, so I need to uh, work with them first. I have two natural log of X plus one third natural log of X plus five. I, I called them powers, they really should be coefficients here, but those coefficients become powers because I can write this as natural log of X to the second, that's what I did here in the second step, and plus natural log of x plus five, and that one third will go up as the power on that group. Now I can say, well, all right, if I have two natural logs being added, then I can write this as one natural log of the combined term x squared times x plus five to the one third. And that would be my final answer. Now, does it really matter if you write it as the one third power or a cube root? Doesn't really matter. Uh, either format of the answer would be fine. Uh, the last thing that, that this section is going to talk about is the change of base property. The change of base property just enables us to write everything as either a common log or a natural log. It says that the log base B of some number M, let's say you have some bizarre base down there like the log base pi of 12 and you're like, oh, how do I get the log base pi of 12? That's asking you what power would you have to raise pi to to get to a 12? Well, it'd be no problem. All you'd have to do is take the log of whatever base you want of 12 divided by the log of whatever base you want of pi. So it's just saying take the log of the, of the term inside the logarithm divided by the log of the base. Now, the base of this log, it could be a common log, it could be a natural log, it can be whatever logarithm you want. So typically the two that we use, uh, so instead of this formula where we do log base E, sorry, log base A, we either do log base 10 or the natural log, which is log base E, because these two are just about on any calculator you could find. So these are the most uh, easy ones to use. So instead of log base A of M over the log base A of B, I can just say, well, it's the log of M over the log of B or the natural log of M over the natural log of B. Now, showing an example of that, if I'm trying to find out what the log base seven of 2,506 is, please remember what this is trying to get you to see is what power of seven is 2,506. That's literally what that logarithm is asking you. What would I rate, need to raise seven to in order to get a 2,506? Well, just thinking about it, I, I should know it's a little bit more than four. My, my powers of seven, I would have seven to the first is one, seven to the second is 49, seven to the third is 343, seven to the fourth is just a little bit less than 2,506. So I'm not surprised that that answer is a little bit more than four. But the way I get to that answer, some of your calculators have the log base formula on it, so you could type it in like that. But any calculator is gonna be able to just have the common log, so you can just say, well, it's just the log of 2506 divided by the log of seven, and that's gonna approximately be equal to, to two decimal places, 4.02. Now, what if you wanted to do it with a natural log instead of the log base 10? No big deal, same answer. As long as you're consistent and take the same log base in the numerator and denominator, you just say, well, it's the log of the term on the end divided by the log of the base. And each time it'll take you to that final answer there. All right, guys. So that does it for the problems in this section. Please make sure you take a look at my homework solutions. Uh, as you're trying any my math lab problems, they should correspond really well. And as always, let me know if you have any trouble.